Hi Scree fans, it's Sidech. Now we're gonna take a look at how the Joseki moves go after this position which I showed you in the previous video and uh, let me go over the moves again here uh, starting from this basic position of silver to 5G rapid attack now if I place pawn to 5D and then black makes this uh, key move for new Saginomi's attack rook to 3H and then the interesting move lands to 1B not trying to uh, move his silver to 4C so uh, black makes a pawn trade here and he simply takes it with the rook alright so now basically there are two options for fight here and one of them is he can open his bishop's diagonal here by pawn to 4e trying to make a bishop trade so uh, black will basically uh, accept the bishop trade here and white will take it with the silver alright now as you can easily see white is now threatening to uh, drop his bishop to here forking the rook and the lance so here black will push the 6th file pawn to 6f blocking the bishop's diagonal now uh, what should white do here? well a bad move here is this pawn drop to 3d well just remember this kind of move is always not very good because uh, black can simply uh, pull his rook back to 3h you see now black is the only player that has a pawn in his hand and black is now simply satisfied with uh, making this pawn exchange in the third file so if you're playing white don't make this kind of pawn drop so uh, maybe a good move here is to drop his bishop to here 2h attacking the lance well black will reply to that by dropping his bishop to 3g so uh, white will have to take it so the lance can develop in a good tempo but uh, white can drop it again to 2h attacking the lance but uh, actually black has a really good move here he can then move his knight again to 4e well you see the silver can't move to uh, here for instance black can promote the rook so uh, he'll move it to here 2b he's protecting this square and preventing the rook from promoting but uh, here black has a good move and that is pawn to 2d well if he takes it black has this uh, nice pawn drop to 2c so uh, this position is good for black so let's go back to here when black has developed his knight to 3g well if you look at the position carefully now the rook cannot go back to his camp because the knight is in its way so uh, maybe white can think of uh, dropping the pawn to 3d at this position but once again this pawn drop is not very good because you see black can simply take this pawn on 4e offering the rook trade and you see if white uh, accepts it this knight can leap over to 4e attacking the silver and it's obviously good for black so uh, pawn drop to 3d is not good well actually the best move here for white is a really interesting move is this bishop drop to uh, 2g well what white is trying to do here is he's trying to drop his pawn now to 3d in the next move and you see because of this bishop's diagonal the rook cannot go back to 3f nor can he take this pawn right so actually this bishop drop is a very good one so uh, black will have to uh, find a really good move to reply to this and that is you push this pawn to 2d so uh, if white drops a pawn here you see the black can swing his rook over to 2e attacking the bishop well the bishop can promote to here on 3f but you see the rook is protected by the knight so black can simply promote this pawn and horse will take the rook but black can take it and the silver will run and now this position is uh, clearly good for black but suppose you're playing black at this position and how would you make the next move well do you want to drop a pawn to uh, here maybe 2b well that's not bad but try to find a better one well in this kind of situation usually this kind of pawn drop is always good well you see this one is a bit heavier so uh, this one is a lighter trying to make another promoted pawn to here in the next move so uh, maybe white will drop the rook to uh, here attacking the knight 
but you can promote the pawn. Rook goes up, trying to attack this promoted pawn. Now what are you going to do? Well, don't try to clear off the pieces here. You should find a cool and steady move, and that is you pull back the promoted pawn to 2D. Now it's protecting the knight on 2E, and what is more, now you're threatening to take this pawn, forking the rook and the silver, so it's much a better move, and black is winning here. Oh, and by the way, if we move back a little here, when you have pushed the second foul pawn to 2D, uh, if white simply takes it, what's the next move? Right, is this a knight sacrifice to 2E? Really cool. Now after pawn takes it, you take it by the rook, and you're forking the bishop and the lance, oh sorry, the knight, and black is winning. Alright, so to summarize all these moves so far, opening the bishop's diagonal here by pawn to 4e doesn't work for white. Alright, so instead of that, now I'm going to show you the best move, I mean the Joseki move for white, and it's this, silver to 4c. Now what he's trying to do is, he's trying to make a counterattack on the third file, uh, for instance by uh, moving his rook to 3b and fight back on the third file. So what should black do here? Well, uh, maybe you can think of dropping a pawn to 3d, but it's not going to work. The bishop can easily uh, run to 2b, and you see now uh, this pawn is going to be taken by white after he moves the rook to here. You can't save this pawn, right? So don't drop a pawn here. And the Joseki move here is this. Pawn to 4e. Yeah, you want to push this pawn again in the next move. Try to open the bishop's diagonal. So uh, from here, once again, pawn drop to 3d is not very good. Uh, black can simply pull his rook back. Black is the only player who has a pawn in his hand. And maybe uh, black will try to move his rook back to 2h in the next move. And then try to make a pawn exchange by pushing the fourth file pawn. I mean like this. You see, only the knight can take it, so black can break the second file. So, uh, even if white defends the second file with the rook, black can go ahead with the fourth file. And if white simply takes it, uh, bishop trade. And look at this, one a square is open. So because of that, uh, dropping a pawn to 3d is always not so good for white. So, uh, basically, the Joseki move here for white is rook to 3b, trying to go ahead and make a counterattack on the third file. Alright, so from here, black will have to uh, keep attacking. Well, if he simply pull his rook back like that, for instance, white's gonna open his bishop's diagonal from his side, and well, it's a difficult situation for black. You see, if you trade all the major pieces, rooks, and the bishops, it's gonna be white's game because his castle is better. So uh, at this position, black will have to keep attacking. And to do that, black tries to open the bishop's diagonal from his side by pushing the pawn. All right, so uh, one option here for white is uh, to move back his bishop to 2b. Oh, 4b is also possible. But well, uh, let's say 2b, uh, offering a rook trade. So uh, basically black will have to take it, uh, see if it recaptures, quite successfully exchange the rooks, but uh, in this case when the bishop is uh, in this side, black can take the pawn with the bishop, offering a bishop trade, uh, white accepts it, and then uh, black can extend his pawn to 4d, and this is a really good point for black. And you see white can drop a rook first here, but what is important here is that black can uh, let the knight escape the 3g, and even if white attacks the knight with a pawn, the knight can uh, leap over again to 4e, so black's piece efficiency is better here. And stronger players might have a question here, and that would be uh, why not drop the rook to here on 2g, uh, because in this case, if the knight escapes uh, after pawn drop, you see, this pawn promotion is powerful, 
but actually uh, if white drops it to 2G black has uh, this good counter attack dropping a rook to 3G is forking the rook and the silver here so uh, white will have to take it so the knight can develop the 3G and it's even worse position for white alright so as you can see uh, from this position uh, here when black has pushed the fourth file pawn moving the bishop back to 2B doesn't work alright how about dropping a pawn to 3D again here well this time it's not so bad but let's see how it goes uh, rook to 3H and then he'll uh, take this pawn now white is up material by one pawn but black will uh, trade the bishop and uh, well if the knight takes it black has a really good tactic uh, pawn to 2D after white takes it look at this uh, wonderful pawn sack to 4D and after the silver takes it rook can go over to 3D attacking the silver and also threatening to uh, move to this really nice square on 2D so black is better here so uh, how about taking the horse with the rook well in this case black can simply move his rook back to 2H going for the second file and you see this rook is not really mobile here uh, this pawn is really heavy even if white drops a bishop well then black can uh, simply drop a pawn and defend oh and also other than moving the rook to 2H simply dropping a bishop to here might also be good so uh, anyway uh, dropping a pawn to 3D wasn't very good in this position too so the only option left for white is right he can only take the pawn alright so now what should black do here well if you simply uh, make this bishop trade it's not really good uh, rook will take it and you're gonna have to take the rook and knight takes back and as I've said earlier trading all the major pieces rooks and bishops usually ends up in a good position for white because of this good castle mino castle so when white has taken the pawn on 4e uh, black has a really good move here well it makes me think of this proverb a pawn is worth thousand golds uh, pawn drop to 4d well after this uh, white is in a big trouble uh, if he simply takes with the silver black and win material by uh, taking with the bishop uh, because this bishop is pinned and he can't take it back so uh, white can't take it with the silver how about taking with the bishop well once again here black can win material by taking it and you see if the silver takes it this rook will fall so uh, white will have to take this rook but black can take it with the bishop simultaneously running away from the silver so uh, after pawn drop to 4d the best move for white is to uh, pull back his bishop now to here and to be trying to make a counter attack on the rook now uh, if black uh, accepts it the silver can run so that's not what black's gonna do well blacks can just go ahead and take the silver well this line is exciting uh, white will take this bishop first by checking and then take this rook but yes the promoted pawn can take the gold and uh, if white simply takes back with the gold uh, black has a really cool move and his silver drop to 7a a brilliant sacrifice uh, king will take it but then look at this a uh, nice fork bishop to 4d but right this fork itself is not really a big deal quite can simply reply that by dropping a bishop so black's not going to be able to take the rook for free the bishop will recapture but you have to read through far enough because uh, here black has uh, another nice fork of rook to 3a and this time he can win this bishop for free so it's a win for black so uh, if you go back a little to this position instead of taking the promoted pawn by the gold immediately uh, white should drop his bishop here to 3c by checking preventing black's future bishop drop to here so uh, 
this is a check so black will block it with dropping a bishop well this is why white had to drop the bishop to here otherwise for instance it was on 2b this bishop drop on 6f is going to threaten white's bishop to be taken so now after black dropped a bishop then white will take the promoted pawn here but here black has this uh, fork by silver drop rook will promote the silver will take the bishop and if white simply uh, recaptured by the knight black can make this strong defense gold drop to 3i and black is fine so uh, maybe instead of recapturing the promoted silver here immediately white will take the knight first because uh, this attack on the gold is faster but here black has a really nice move silver to 5i which forms a really solid defense here so uh, black is doing pretty well alright so uh, that's all for this video and in the next one I'm gonna show you an even stronger countermeasure that is made by white I mean it's the strongest defense strategy made by white against Static's rook's rapid attack alright so hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time